Uh, if the last stream was my favorite day of the year with the new release, this got to be my second favorite day of the year, right? We're moving on. Second stream in our journeyman save with the Bellarmine Knights, baby, representing the great city of Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, we are on to our second year here. As y'all know, assuming you watched the last stream, uh, you know we had a we had a thought about going off to to play for the Houston Cougars. You know, the home of Elijah Wan and Drexler was it? yeah Elijah Wan and Drexler. Uh, we thought about it, five slam a jamma, bringing it back. But uh, ultimately, we thought uh, we'd hold off, stick it out, see what year two of the Bellarmine Knights brings, and. Uh, see how these freshmen coming in uh, turn out. So here we are. We got all the way through the off season. It is June 26th, first day of recruiting. We've got Preston Means and Jason Treely. Well, those are only two. Yeah, I think those are the only two players we brought in. So we can check them out. You know, you can see now. Here's, you know, here's your hint, right? So these guys, like, okay, the ratings don't look great, but they just got here and our scouts are terrible. But look at this. He's got this attacker rating. With, yeah, Chris says nightlife. What's up, Chris? Glad to have you, buddy. Uh, he's got this, uh, this attacker rating. You know, that's a clue that this is probably a special player. A, a lot of the bad players, they really don't get these player types. So I think that this guy's... An absolute baller. I do not care what my scout says. I trust the camp information. You know me. Uh, take a look here at Treely. Now he doesn't have any of that. His ratings look a little bit better. Uh, but I'm pretty excited about both those guys, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, what? what is my staff? Let's take a look over here. Uh, so i got a decent recruiter here in Murphy. Uh, my scout is Curtis Weathers who looks interesting. He's, he's, he's 21. 21 is his scout rating. He's actually a decent at player development. Do I need to move him over to practice? What's Jimmy Wooten doing? Nothing. Let's make Curtis Weathers our practice coach. What do we say to that? You're doing practice. You're doing scouting. Save the changes. All right, so I think that's a, a slight improvement. But still, it's not an improvement in scouting. They both suck at scouting. So I'm not going to worry about the scouted ratings. Uh, I'm going to worry about what I thought about these players when I brought them in. I thought they were good players, probably uh, guys that can make this program uh, better. So they're here. Uh, but regardless, it's June 26th, so let's bounce over and see. Ooh, we do not have our emails. I might have already deleted the email that says how many scholarships I get this year and that had all the information from my year. I got five scholarships this year. So I do think we had the one carryover. Honestly, I don't remember if anyone transferred out or not. But uh, here we go. We're still uh, really trying to build this team out. All that I've got that I'm really satisfied with is, honestly, means, truly, I think could be good. Uh, but we definitely need some guard play, that sort of thing. So uh, with Bellarmine, I'm probably just sticking to the state of Kentucky. Take a look here at our prestige real quick. It is a lowly 14, as is our conference prestige. This is only Bellarmine's second year in Division I. You guys watched the last stream. You know it went terribly, 7-22. and 22. Um, But it's not very high expectations here. We didn't even lose very much job security for that. We still only have a goal of winning 10 games. Even if we miss out on both these goals this year, uh, I think our job's pretty safe for a couple of years here just because the expectations are so unbelievably low. So... We're just going to go about building this little program and not worry too much about that. So we're going to bounce over here. We will kind of focus on guards, but I mean, five scholarships. To me, that's five positions. I'm going to do my usual, you know. We're going to go position by position through Kentucky. Now, see, none of these guys have interest. So with these guys, it's a little bit up to me to... Uh, I've got to sort out who will actually be eligible and who won't. I at least have to be concerned about it. Um, SAT minimum of 900, that's not that bad. So, you know, my usual rule of thumb is if they're interested in me at the beginning of the year, they're almost always going to qualify. But I'm not going to have any real decent players interested in me. So, we are just going to... I mean, I think all of these guys are pretty safe to qualify. 
interest rates. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's not great. I mean, 14 prestige, it's really, really low. This is just the in-state point guards. <laughs> but yeah, it's really, really bad. And that's why, you know, with this school, like both those guys that we recruited did decent at the Georgia camp, which is the worst camp. But this is an awful, awfully low prestige school. So um, we're adding all of these guys. Uh, I do think I'll skip him. Nah. What the heck? If he doesn't have interest, he's got to be talented, right? What I add here? Uh, you know what? Oh, the JUCO's not interested. If the JUCO was interested, I would actually consider adding him to the list. Uh, but I'm not going to do that here. Gosh, a lot of these players are just really low rated. It's so hard to get a, a feel for who I want to add. Now, I do not want to add this 2.4 GPA. That's going to scare me. As is the 2.1 is definitely scary. Uh, the Juco, again, if you were interested, maybe. Uh, here, we're just going to have to go with some one-star guys and hope that somebody's good at camp. Minimum SAT at Bellarmine was 900. I just checked that a second ago. So here's a four-star player in the state of Kentucky, but uh, Bellarmine's not going to have any shot at that. We will stick with the three stars and hope for the best. Hey, look, some one-stars. Now, see, this is what I'm talking about, this 2.1. He's not going to qualify. That's his issue. I don't know what this guy's issue. Maybe he just has a really strong disdain for the Bellarmine Knights. All right. Again, add in the three stars with decent GPAs. Juco uninterested. I will take a look because I'm not going to have enough players to really fill out these lists. So, oh, gosh. Only five centers in the entire state. Yikes. Uh, these two low GPAs I'm not worried about because they start off with some interest. So uh, now that we only got 34 players, I will expand it out to the region just to see. But I'm only going to look at um, interested recruits. All right, so here's a two-star Juco. That's a maybe. Already got them on the list already most of them so i mean you can see even within the region like we just don't have many options we don't have a whole lot of interest generally speaking i don't really need to add that much more we got 35 players uh yikes <laughs> what's up oh the ctg team here to watch i appreciate you guys showing up giving us some support that's awesome uh we're gonna we're gonna see if i can get through an entire season i already did a little bit of a video what's up beach bear Buy in the all right, yeah. Got that buy. Um, yeah, I'm glad to have you here. Glad to have CTG here. Uh, like I said, we're gonna try and see if I can get through an entire stream, but uh, I've already already recorded a video tonight, so I don't know how much uh, downstairs time I'm gonna get before I start drawing some upstairs aggro, if you know what I mean. So let's get to our call and watch list in all regions, just to be careful. And let's start bringing some of these Kentucky guys in for visits. Let's also get some film. Good to go. And we will try to call a couple of these two-star fellows up. See if we can't get some interest here. Wisconsin's going to be so easy. <laughs> All right, man. Good luck. Uh, and back to being hung up on and ignored from the recruits. Asked him four questions, didn't open up a single pitch area. I don't even know if this is worth it on these players until I've actually either got my recruiting maxed out so I don't get hung up on or identify the targets that I really want to unlock. And I guess I should really just be trying to unlock location anyway, which is the only pitch I'm going to actually realistically make. Can't get him to answer a single question. All right, so we're skipping the rest of the call time because I find that process extremely tedious. Depends on, uh, you're looking right here at overall number. Is that what you're asking about? If you're, if you're asking about this overall number, then, oh, are you asking about this letter grade over here for overall? 
Because the, the overall letter grade is an overall idea of the player's skill. Reliability of the report is 100% based on how good your coach is at scouting and how often they've seen them. And, and there's still going to be some fog of war, but the more they see them, the more they watch game film, the more they watch them live. If they show up and do some uh, scouting at a camp, all those things are going to help give you a more accurate report, but you're always going to have, to some degree, some fog of war. But yes, this is an indication of the player's overall ability, not a uh, reliability of the report. Let's get through our camps. You guys can't see that we do already have the one three-star player that had a little bit of interest uh, just from our on-campus visit. So that's always good stuff. We got through those two camps. Let's host a few more guys. Let's get some more film. And honestly, I'm just barely... What's up, Breeze? Glad to have you, buddy. Yeah, no problem. Anytime there's a question, if I know the answer, I'll, I'll shout it out. And even if I don't, sometimes I'll just make up the answer. And so you really got to like look me in the eyes and see see how much you trust me and how much you don't. But uh, I'll always try to answer, man. Oh, Lord. I'm just joking. If I don't know, I'll tell you I don't know. But with this game, I've got enough hours sunk into enough... Uh, iterations of the game generally a no and I really am just skipping through I'm not bothering with the calls uh, until we get until I've identified who I'm going after I just cannot stand it's such a waste of time to be hung up on oh there we go a little bit of interest popped off there and we can always come over and check out the emails if you guys would like uh, you know, we, anybody that still has none interest, they said the visit wasn't worthwhile. Not worthwhile, not worthwhile. It's pretty easy. Now, these guys both appreciated it. That's why their interest is now cool. Which is pretty cool. National can't recap. All right, so right here are guys that are on our list that went to the Georgia camp. So, this is where we're going to get our first information on these guys. Didn't stand out. Top 10 player at Georgia. So, Dave Malloy sh rockets to the top of our list. Of course, he's already warm on Louisville. Man, for a second, I'm like, I just came emails. <laughs> uh, for a second, I had just come out of uh, recording on a Louisville save. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the guy I want, and he's, he's warm on me. But, uh, yeah, this isn't one of my Louisville saves. This is Bellerman. He's not interested in Bellerman at all, but we are very interested in him. Uh, but, yeah, this is totally top ten at Georgia. That's really a guy that uh, he could very much go to a top a top tier school like Louisville, like Kentucky, like anybody on this list, and fill in uh, if they've got an area of weakness. This probably isn't their first target uh, because a lot of times these players that do really well at these camps, they're still going to want some PT. They're good players. Uh, but, shoot, which one was that? Is that Howard or Barber? Oh, it was Dave Malloy. It's not in the same order. Sorry. All right, so Grizzard, Grizzard. Okay, he's another another interest. Uh, excuse me, interesting player for us. Johnny Williams is interesting. And a handful of these guys didn't even go to Georgia. Why are we on Fox? Oh, we need to go through these one by one, didn't we? Because on that list, it's actually going through my recruit lists. Grizzard, Williams, Malloy are the three. Grizzard, Williams, and Malloy. So let's make sure, if we haven't already, that we get them in for some visits. There's Dave Malloy. He's already visited, and he liked the visit. So that's awesome. <laughs> Almost got a five-star. <laughs> Who? 
Who, who are you liking at inside scoring, but he's trash everywhere else? My device slowed down. Where'd you almost get the five star at there? Uh, Rakosmos D. Rakosmos D. Rock OS. You have to help me through the pronunciation on that. But Dave Malloy enjoyed the visit. Top 10 player at Georgia. Oh, this has got to be who uh, who Beach Bear was talking about. Beach Bear, keep in mind, dude, these are our scouts' ratings of this guy. We've only seen him once. He's not even on campus yet, and our scout is awful. So, relatively speaking, yes, his inside shooting is probably better than his athleticism. But, uh, I mean, to me, he just looks like, uh, he looks like an inside guy. He's not going to be a terribly great defender. He's going to be good enough rebounding, scoring. Uh, and the snake pit. <laughs> oh, that's right. The snake pit. How'd you almost get a five star to the snake pit? That's, I think that was fool's gold. That must have been a dude with like a 1.8 GPA, right? <laughs> Top 10 at Georgia, man. I don't care what these ratings say. This guy would change the program. He's getting an offer for certain. Grizzard, another one that enjoyed his visit. Another one that is immediately getting a scholarship offer. And was Johnny Williams the other? Top 25. But he has no interest. He hasn't visited yet. Oh, Grizzard has interest and hasn't even visited. we got to get Grizzard and Williams both in. Oh, it's the dead period. Ugh. All right, let's dial up my voice, see if we can unlock at least pitch, location, uh, pitch area location. Number one. That's right. So I can go through the rest of these until he hangs up on me. There we go. 2.2 GPA. Yeah, see, a lot of times those guys with terrible GPAs, like they're fool's gold, you think you can get them, and then it, even if you do get them, they don't ever qualify. So it's a super uh, annoying. Number one. And see, this is why, guys, if you, I was recording earlier our top ten uh, tips and advice for uh, this year's version of the game. And it's pretty similar to last year, but anybody that's been around for any length of time is going to know. Uh, I always recommend that people at very small prestige programs stay in-state recruiting. And the reason is so many of these guys are into location. As you get down in stars, like the very top guys, the five-star guys, they're all they're all interested in prestige, right? You get a handful of guys through there that are interested in facilities or academics or something like that. Most of them are prestige. Once you get down here, it's all about location. That's why these local schools can clean up in here, right? He's not going to tear his ACL. Take your bad vibes elsewhere. Yeah, I've seen guys with low GPAs get a good SAT score, 100%. I've seen a 2.2 get like a 1,000 on his SAT before. It's kind of crazy. I mean, it's rare. It's exceedingly rare. But there are some wide ranges. Uh, honestly, the, the best indicator of whether a guy is going to qualify for your school or not, if it's players in, like, Okay, so a school like Bellarmine, I've got to try to develop interest in these three-star guys. I know it's because my prestige is low and they're just not interested. But, like, say I'm Kentucky, right? I've got a huge prestige. I know everybody in state wants to come there. If they say none interest and their GPA is anything questionable, 2.6 or lower, I'd almost guarantee you they're not going to qualify. And that's before you've made any of your recruiting pitches because you can turn a non-qualifier, one of these 2.1 GPA guys, you can get them interested real fast. But on day one, before you've done visits, before you've done calls, if they already right out of the gate have interest in you, they're probably going to qualify. I've never seen one not do it. If you guys get an example of somebody not qualifying under that uh, circumstance, under that set of conditions, point it out to me and let me know so I don't spread false information. But I uh, feel pretty confident in that. get our hosting let's get our, our live scouting so now we're getting now we're going to get our recruits in there see them in person we're going to get better information out of this uh, not that i'm going to pay too much attention to it unless it comes down like if i'm splitting hairs between a couple of guys yeah i'm absolutely going to go want to know what the scouts say that's why i take the time to to scout and watch film and all that sort of thing that's a tiebreaker for me though uh, i'm mostly 
the the camp results and just the overall ratings combined with players that are actually interested that's generally going to be what dictates who I'm making offers to as you can see I got a couple of guys I know they did well in camp uh, they're interested they're in state they're meeting all the criteria that's why I had no hesitation in throwing out those offers quickly Williams is going to come in for his on-campus visit here and if he has a good visit and that changes from none to cool he's going to get an offer as well Ooh, said academics were important, but only had a 2.5 GPA in high school. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I don't think he thought it was that important. Maybe his parents thought it was really important, so he was just saying that. The Virginia's SAT is really high. Really high. All right, Johnny Williams visited. He's still not interested, so that's a bummer. The good news is we already had Memphis. Yes, sir. All right, so it doesn't look like any of our guys. And Johnny Williams, that's very disappointing. Let's see, did Dave Molloy go to Memphis, and how did he do? Look at that. Dave Molloy goes to Memphis. He's a top 10 player. So this right here, I mean, he's only a three-star recruit. He's ranked 341 nationally, 50th best center, 76 in the region. But he was a top 10 player in the region top 10 player at Georgia. This guy is a baller. I don't care what these ratings say. I want him badly. I want him badly. Where is Grizzard? He's top 25 at Memphis. Top 25 at Georgia, top 25 at Memphis. I mean, he's, he's doing things, right? So, now, since Williams was not interested... We really need to see if we can't find some guards who are going to be interested. Right, Grizzard's a small four. What's, how'd Newman do? Didn't stand out. Okay. Let's break this down by position. What do you say? Um, well, those guys do not have interest. Let's check it out anyway. It's looking ugly here at point guard. All right, so a couple of guys that didn't stand out, and the rest of them didn't even bother going to the camp. So that's really bad news at the point guard position. Did Ben Jones do anything? Didn't stand out at either camp. All right, so that's looking ugly for us right now. Yeah, 1,100 sounds right for Virginia. Oh, actually playing your first save of 2021, man. Enjoy it. Uh, they made some really good improvements. I thought... I thought it was going to be really tough for them to improve over what they did in 2020, but uh, i got to give it to them. I, I think they made some really cool improvements. Uh, it's made a, a tremendous work ethic. That's good. Uh, it's made quality of life a whole lot better, in my opinion. All right, so Hallbauer is by far the best guard that we have on our list. The bad news is do you focus on needs or talent when you recruit both? Uh, focus on both. Uh, obviously, uh, and it depends on what the situation is. What I try to do is just remember how interchangeable these players are. Like, if I desperately need a point guard, but I've got a five star shooting guard in my sights lined up, can't wait to commit. I'm bringing in the five star shooting guard, no question. I'll I'll let him play the point guard. So. A lot of times I, I try to balance out my roster so that I have like five guards, three small forwards, and five inside players, uh, and, and that can move around a little bit. You know, if I end up with six guards, seven inside players, okay, a power forward's going to slide down and play the three, and I'm rolling. Or a tall shooting guard's going to slide over and play the three. I mean, it's it's really interchangeable. As long as you don't have like ten centers and one point guard, you know, you don't want to gum it up that bad. But otherwise, I would more more focus on talent. But certainly I have my goals of what I want to see at each position. So I don't know what to do here. Maybe for Hallbauer, uh, we throw out an offer because he's the only decent guard we can find and see if we can't bring him around and see the light at the in-home visit stage. Because we desperately need some guards, and we just have no information that suggests that any of these guards are worth anything. 
power forwards. Oh, you got into the 2050s. Uh, Axe, did you follow our stream for 2020? Because I think we got all the way to like the late 2040s. I think we got to the late 2040s. I'm sure uh, somebody else can correct me if I'm wrong on that. We had like almost 30 years, I think. All right, so Sebastian's top 25. Top 25. There's Johnny Williams. All right, so all the guys I have absolutely no interest are all pretty good. Was it all three top 25? Yeah, so no real difference there. Statistically speaking, we got a better rating on Weber, but he's the only real difference. He gets a little bit more rebounds, but a little bit less points. I wonder what their defense looks like. So we got a Weber as a better defender. I'll go for that. Let's see if we can get five minutes out of him. No. I'll just go to the end home and pitch him location. I'm not going to worry about it. I don't want to be hung up on a thousand times. It's super annoying. I cannot. One of the things I tell people is to make sure that you get all these things unlocked and get prepared for your in home visits. Uh, but, you know, in all honesty, uh, I'm at a small school. I know almost certainly locations what I'm pitching. So, for me in this particular circumstance, I don't know that that's absolutely a requisite. We got to figure out something to do with this point guard situation. Let's see. Who are the decent defenders? Any of them interested? Of course not. Uh, let's just go for Clark. We got a decent, he's a decent defender. Got a decent overall rating on him. I mean, it's better than nothing, I suppose. Let's see. Hold on. First of all, do any of these guys have a work ethic note? Because that's always helpful. Or are, do any of them have, like, a bad note? Not seeing it. Not seeing it. I think I've gone all the way through this list at this point. Well, yeah, we're just going to offer Clark, see what happens. Uh, I don't expect anything good will come of it, but, I mean, I had an, another offer to give, right? Uh, let's get on with, let's see, I think Grizzard we've got unlocked for location. He's number one on that. Let's get all positions up, see what our offers are. So, Clark, let's see if we can get five minutes. Uh, you know, if the, I, I've never, I can't answer that question intelligently with regard to this game because I've not ever been in that position to experiment with that. Uh, my gut instinct would say if the skills are there, if he's the best passer, handler, high offensive IQ, if he's the best on your team, give it a shot and see what happens, right? I mean, Magic Johnson would have traditionally been you know, not a point guard, uh, LeBron James. But, you know, if you had Magic Johnson or LeBron James or somebody on your team, yeah, you'd stick him at point guard, right? I mean, of course, Magic really was a point guard in real life, but, like, the game engine would never create that guy. You know, he'd be created as a power forward. So I would say give it a shot, see what happens. Yeah, shot selection something that you need to look at, that's for certain. You don't want to end up in a situation where a non-shooter is out there trying to handle the ball. Do I have my visits or have I just been yapping the whole time? Let's get some guys set up for visits. In advance. We got offers out. We know we're pitching location. We really don't have any reason to, to hold back, right? One of the NBA legends in CB21. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. Not having a good point guard is 100% killer. That's why having a good point guard is one of the things that I could not possibly recommend more strongly. You need a good... Oh, gosh. Hallbauer got upgraded to four stars, as did Sebastian Scales. We didn't offer him, but... I'm going to say we probably don't have a shot at Hallbauer. We're going to keep going at him, though. <laughs> no reason to stop now. 
Brian doesn't even want to visit in the in-state. Was he not? In, was he one of the guys we added that's not in-state? Yep, yeah, from Florida. Not surprising, really. Not surprising. Hmm. It's our first warm interest that showed up. He's a hard-working kid, too. What position? Oh, he's a small forward. Uh, it's actually one of the two positions where we've got one of our preferred players that does have some interest. So uh, I don't know that I'm going to jump on that. But at the same time, uh, I could definitely pull the scholarship from either Hallbauer or Weber, neither of whom are interested, and throw it over to Melson since he's a hard worker and uh, actually has some interest, right? But let's let's keep cranking through this. Ooh, Derek Church got up to warm. That's good. Must have had some good visits there, right? 28 turnovers in a game. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Blaze, I would want to visit Hawaii. If I got an offer, I would totally want to visit Hawaii. So three out of our five scholarship offers have absolutely no interest in coming to our school. This is not optimal, folks. I, I'll tell you that. Um, this isn't even the best way to, to build this program, really. Uh, but uh, when you're stuck with, you, know, you can get bad players to come to your school or just strike out swinging for these kind of guys, it's kind of 50-50, right? Like if I don't get these guys, I can add any one or two star guy, and there's really not a huge difference in my opinion. Uh, now Malloy and Grizzard, guys like that that we know are our priorities for us. Yeah, sure, that's a different story, but I'm not gonna lose sleep. Like these guys down here, you know, if I end up with these guys, so be it. Uh, I mean, we'll we'll have we'll field a full team, right? I'm at least gonna go into these guys' houses. Make the visit into the living room. I'm going to have to sit on their couch and make them tell me no to my face before I give up on them. Otherwise, we got pie in the sky dreams for Bellarmine University, right? Conference tourney champs. I don't know about that, Chris. That's that's optimistic. You know, we're, we're taking baby steps. Last year, we went for seven wins. Uh, this year, we're going to go for eight. <laughs> Uh, no, I think we can hit the 10 wins this year if the two players I recruited uh, are significantly better, as I hope they will be. Of course, it's a little bit dependent. I don't know how good the guys are that left. Uh, it's been a week, and I've completely forgotten. Uh, I think the entire team was pretty terrible. But, of course, the guys that we brought in, like they will be good players. It's just a matter of, like, are they good players right now? And the answer is probably going to be not particularly. 7-2 mutant baby steps. I would like to take 7-2 baby steps. That would be cool. Alright, we got one more week of visits. We still got $11,000, so budget's not a concern. We're just going to keep... When you're recruiting these in-state guys, you know, the visits only cost $125, so you barely ever even have to pay attention to it. No, Blaze, I, I've got my own solo save offline. Uh, so I'm running Xavier University in that one. And I actually just won the national championship with them. Uh, that team is stacked. I took a couple week break while I was doing some other things, uh, waiting for the final version of this to come out. So uh, you can actually scroll back in the GM Games Let's Play channel and see the roster I had at Xavier. On brutal recruiting, mind you. And uh, I just won the national championship with that, I think, with that roster, if not the next year's roster. All right, so time for in-home visits. The first two visits are definitely to the guys that we know are interested. And I don't even need to look at any of this stuff. We're just going to walk in a pitch location. Oh, he's hot on a Murray State. All right, so this is terrifying because... Immediately, even though they have a little bit of interest, we're not on either of their top tens, and that's an absolutely awful sign. 
Uh, uh, uh. It's not going good for us so far. Oh, we're number one on Howard's list. That's interesting. All right. Uh, we are still going to go in and talk with these other folks. And we're just pitching location and seeing what happens. Uh, Hallbauer should almost certainly end up at a major school. Uh, James Clark, I'm not all that interested in. Weber, I definitely was. Wait a second. I have missed. Did I? I got those two. Oh, I didn't actually click it on him. Location on Hallbauer and location on Weber. Still got money. We are going to bring a few more in. Oh, is that O'Brien again? We've almost brought all 35 of these guys in for campus visits now. Alright, so let us see how these... Oh, we didn't get anybody on the Norton list. That is shocking. Oh, goodness. Uh, let's see in this first week. Oh, I still got an email back here. See if we get any commitments. I'm going to guess no. I'm going to guess this is going to be a pretty tough recruiting season for us, and we're going to end up with a lot of one and two stars that we're not really that interested in. But, yeah, you have to go premium on reports. There's no way around it. Uh, I could really show that to you if I was at a better school. On this one, it's just like, terrible. Uh, so Weber can't see it. Hallbauer can't see it. Those are really bad signs, which means we need to get off of them and onto someone else because they're going somewhere else. Like, I'll listen to them tell me no a few times. If they tell me no at the end home, cut loose and run. You're never going to. Almost never landing those guys. Now, they can tell you like they had a bad visit. If but if they still have interest, if it still says cool, if you're still in their top ten, that's a different story. But when you get that note and it says no interest and you're not in their top ten and they've got a lot of interest in other schools, like he's going to Miami or Mississippi State. He just is. So, Hobauer is going to go from scholarship offer to remove from the list, as is Stephen Weber. We are going to visit James Clark. Going to get that location pitch on Malloy again. Look at that. We jumped right up on... Oh, that's a... I mean, I don't like that Tennessee and Louisville and these other schools are circling around. But we moved up to number four on his list. So we've got an actual shot at landing Malloy, which is huge. Ridiculously huge. We've moved up to number four with Grizzard as well. Now, you know, these other schools ahead of us, it, it is concerning. I would prefer to be number one. That's 100% true. But we don't necessarily know whether or not they've got offers from those schools. So I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it, right? We need to find a shooting guard. You know, I don't know that any of this really makes a huge difference. These guys are all going to be quite terrible. Uh, let's just see if our scout thinks anybody's decent at defense. He likes Glover. Ooh. Oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, I need anyone contacted. I need to revoke the scholarship offers. I thought removing them from the list would automatically do that. It did not. Back to the call and watch list. Okay. Uh, Glover is going to get an offer. We'll go in and pitch location to him. And power forward. I mean, we might as well offer scales. Make him tell us no in person. Then we... Oh, we're out. Uh, make him tell us no in person. Then we can cut him off the list as well, right? So we'll see how this goes. All right. Advance on to scheduling. Uh, we got a handful of winnable home games here in this out of conference. Hopefully. Hopefully. Our team is still really bad, though. Like, 
honestly, to get this team winning games, I think it'll take about two more years. Like, we need this other class, this class I'm recruiting now, we need it to be good, and then we need... Uh, we need the class to be good, and then we need them to get like a year of experience, and then they'll be all right. All right, so we got one scholarship back, and we got two decisions from Grizzard and Malloy. So one of these guys is coming, one of them's not, and I really hope it's Malloy that's coming because he would be huge. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Top 10 player in the region, guys. This is one of the best 10 players in the Southeast region, and he's coming to Bellarmine, which is crazy. Grizzard's going to UAB, which sucks. But you know what? You take what you can get. Glover doesn't see it. Malloy and Grizzard both had good visits. Clark can't see it. All right. So basically, oh, we didn't we didn't even try on scales yet because we were out of visits. Yeah, yeah. So to both of those, yes, Axe, that is a massive recruit. Malloy is huge. He will be the best player on the team next year coming out of the gate, uh, even with the guys we brought in last year. Uh, massive, massive recruit for us. And to the other question, no, I don't think it loses effectiveness. If you're going in there and you're making a pitch, you know what they want to hear. You pitch what they want to hear. All right, so now we are in the business of... All right, we need to revoke and remove. That gives us two scouts. So we should have four. One, two, three. Where's our other? Four. Tyson Glover can't see playing for us. All right, well, that's just embarrassing. All right, point guard. I mean, uh, they're all just so bad. But at least we can go out and pitch. We can actually go out and visit at each position. We'll just go after the one two-star guy, see what happens there. Small forward, we've actually got a decent player interested here in Newman. So we'll pitch location there, make that offer. And a power forward. Location. One of these players, I forgot to offer a scholarship to. I think it was the shooting guard. Yep. All right, all our scholarships have been offered. All our visits are out. We got this week and one more week. Uh, really, we just need, like, two more decent guys. Scales would obviously be massive, but I have about 0% chance, faith, that he'll show up. At this point, it really just looks like it's going to be Malloy with uh, the two guys that we brought in last year, and then whatever we can fill in around that. Um, so they're going to be we're going to be really strong. Like this year will be all right. Next year will be even better on the inside. Uh, the perimeter is just going to be awful. Chris Newman going elsewhere, going to Winthrop. Scales can't see it. Howard and Jones both like the visits at least. So. We can ditch scales, unfortunately. Revoke and remove. And I don't think we've tried for Johnny yet. I know we were interested in him early, and he didn't like our, the visit. But uh, I don't think we did the in-home with him. So we'll do the offer. Get moving here. Small forwards looking uglier and uglier. I guess there's no real difference between any of the three of these guys. Let's see if we got any kind of hard-working kid. I'll take that. You know, you, you take what you can get at some point. We're a 14 prestige school. We already landed a pretty massive recruit for this season. Uh, so the rest of this is just kind of filling out roster, having guys that can play, right? Howard, we're pitching location. And the thing is, this is what they're interested in. They're, these guys aren't really interested in a whole lot of other pitches, to be honest. Uh, so see, we've already pop up, popped up onto his list. He does have some higher, some better schools ahead of us. But, again, we don't know if he's got offers from here, tipping the scales. And I'd love to tip that scale, but it did not work out for us. 
so yeah, we don't know if those other schools have made offers. We at least jumped into his top ten. You know, we can we can keep at this. At this point, nobody that we're going after makes a big difference. We got the difference maker already, uh, and we couldn't get any of the other ones. So it, it just is what it is at this point. We're through the in-home visit period. We've got all of our offers out. None of these guys turned us down. Brandon Howard did commit. So let's see, that was the shooting guard, I believe. No. Was Howard the point guard? Who the heck was that? Who just committed to us? Uh Oh, I had only available on there. So, yes, Brandon Howard was the shooting guard. Cool beans. We got a three-star baby. Uh, I don't think he did well in camps. Yeah, he didn't stand out at Georgia or Memphis, so he's not going to come in uh, really ready to play. But the three-star suggests preliminarily maybe he's got a little bit of potential that he maybe he's going to grow into something uh so i mean he's a great leader that's good to see uh you know it's it's better than nothing we got a three-star shooting guard uh, take it for what it's worth just happy to be able we actually can recruit guards it's not illegal for bellman university to recruit guards uh our first season and the first three weeks of in-home visits through this save did not really reflect that. But now we've recruited our first guard in the GM Games official Twitch stream for Draft Day Sports College Basketball 2021. I don't guess it's official, but it's my official one. Uh, so we should be set up. We've, we should have set up our practice, our, our strategy. All that good stuff was done last time. So we're good to go there. Uh, now we're just about rolling through and seeing what happens. See if we can get any more of these guys to commit. We can keep an eye right here if we get any emails or if we get any scholarships back. That's going to give us a hint that somebody has committed. Still got the three outstanding offers, but none of them are really uh, all that vital. Nothing going on right now. Just uh, getting through these practices and getting ready to see what our new players look like on the court in an actual game. So I'm excited. I, I think it's going to be good. We do need to set our depth. That's one thing we got to get to. And again, I don't know. Uh oh, we got we got some inbox. Oh, it's gonna be season started. Don't forget the red shirt. Maybe a commitment, or maybe a scouting report. Red shirt and two scouting reports. Okay. Uh, again, yeah, I don't know if I'll get through this entire season tonight, but you know we're giving it a go. We're gonna see how how we progress. This entire season uh -oh. tonight, but you know, we're giving it a go. We're gonna see how how we progress. I'm disabling my device as I accidentally open the stream on there, so that was fun. Get a little bit of feedback, right? Looping action. Uh, as I sim these games, I'm gonna see if I can get logged back in so I can read chat. Right now, I'm down on chat, guys. I can't see anything. All right, no games yet. All right, now we're moving again. I'll tell you what, my tablet is being awfully difficult to deal with tonight. It has been the past couple of times. I don't know if... I think I might need to like update the Twitch app on it or something. I got no idea. Here we go, baby. Bellarmine Knights starting off the season on the road at the ECU Pirates. Uh, before we get into the game, we definitely need to check out our depth chart and see what we're rolling with. All right, so let's cancel out of that. Let's get over here into the depth chart now let's see if we let the ai suggest everything let's see what they do so they actually start treely 
and they show no love for means. That's not going to work for me, guys. Let's see. Charlie Hill. All right. What's means looking like? Ooh. Oh. He's still got the attacker badge, right? Uh, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Let's see. He wants to play. That's fair. I want him to play. None of the rest of these guys are going to care at all. Cards 2.0 after getting feed. Sorry about that. Yeah, the feedback was interesting, right? Because it, it, it started playing on my device over here. So uh, We know Delay is a baller. He showed that last year. We know Keeley's highly rated at the very least. Uh, I am going to make the executive decision to... Uh, you know what? I will let that guy start. I'm going to bring Means up here I'm gonna bring Thompson back up a little and what I'm gonna do is let means get all of the backup time on the inside so he's the power forward there he's the center there and this guy's the center there uh, same thing in the second half power forward oops no that'll, that'll work and then we can let Myers and Thompson they can play at the end of that half that's fine move McDice down a little alright let's roll with this see how it goes see how, see how it plays out right Yeah, so the rating scales on the 1 through 10 versus adjusted, the 0 to 100. This is the first year that they've done the 0 to 100 adjusted, okay? Whoa! On the road! Started off right, baby! Charlie Hill did big things. Got some instant feedback on him. Uh, leaving him in the starting lineup pays off right away. Uh, but anyway, this is the first year that they've done the 1 to 100 adjusted. And it's still not perfected uh, I mean maybe it's perfected or maybe it's at the end but the game was designed on a 1 to 10 scale that's what it's designed to work with so if you want to use the 1 to 100 you're not going to get uh, in my opinion the game's better 1 to 10 um, I don't know how somebody being a 73 instead of a 7 really affects your, your gaming experience but I can tell you if the ratings are all gummed up and don't really the 1 to 10 are a really good, really refined reflection on how good these players are at these various skills. 1 to 100 is, it's the first year they've done it. So, uh, you know, maybe it's great. Maybe it can improve. Well, whatever. I stick with 1 to 10. All right, let's see. Can we start off 2 and 0? Oh? We got the Northern Kentucky Norse. A little in-state battle here between a couple of new, uh, Bellarmine's brand new Division One. Northern Kentucky's been Division One for about five or six years now. Uh, let's see who wins in this one. Woo! Oh, my word. Lawson Hill, Treely jumping in there. Guys, we're 2-0. and oh. Where? Give me something to joust with. We're jousting, baby. 2-0, and oh, Bellarmine. Our goal is to win 10 games this year. We're 20% of the way there. 20% of the way there. Eight more games, and I'll be in the Bellarmine Hall of Fame. Keep in mind that B-minus is your scout's rating, so there's no promises there. All right, Malloy and Howard signed their LOIs. They are in, baby. We've got top ten in the region. Dave Malloy signed with a letter of intent. He's going to come in is like a four or five. Uh, you know, I still, I'm not 100% sure if they rate these guys. The star ratings are based on your school and like expectations for a player for your school. But I can tell you right now, when we go on down the road, uh, you know, a year from now, when we get to, um, 
when we get to our look back on this stream and we go around and look and go, oh, Ballerman, you know, that was cool, right? A long time ago. I guarantee you Dave Molloy is going to be at the top of their record books on scoring, rebounding, all kinds of stuff. Maybe not the very top, but he's going to be up toward the top. Unless he transfers out or something, that dude is a stud, an absolute stud for a school at this level. The conference tourney auto bid action. Hey, we'll see what we got. We we started off strong. We can take a, a break for a couple months if we need to, right? All right, so we're going on the road to Alabama, and they sent us packing. Not only that, but they injured Antonio Lawson in the process. So, that's not good. Let's see, Frank Hamilton's upset with us. Where is... Where's our injury? There it is. Ah, oh, broken elbow. That's a big... That's a big shot. I think he was a starter, wasn't he? Yep, he sh certainly was. So, Antonio Lawson, uh, eight points a game through the first couple of games there. Almost three assists, three rebounds. Uh, some nice junior leadership here. He, well, he didn't really know the offenses that well. He could attack his own, I suppose. Uh, but anyway, he's out for two months. So that is a blow for sure. So, we are going... Do we want to go with Ward? Or do we want to go with... Vice. Let's see what's up here. Let's see, there's Ward and Vice. Ward's a better score. Vice, slightly better defender. He can pass and handle much better. Mm. Kind of a tough decision. I think I'm going to go... Let's see. I think I'm going to let the proficiency on the offense and defense... Uh, and we're going to let... We're going to give Dice the start here. But it's close for me. All right. Let the AI suggest a matrix on that. No, you need to be down here. And now we will fix what we did with means. Which was to go power forward, power forward, center, center. Okay. All right, so that problem is fixed. It's always, a lot of times, I really like to stick with the AI's suggestions, both in the Matrix and overall, but, you know, for whatever reason, they're not crazy about means. They're certainly not as high on them as I am, uh, so they're not giving him the minutes I'd like to see. Actually, I might need to go in. Sometimes it does that to you because you don't have this properly set. Uh, but in this case, I do have him set to be a power forward and center, so it, it's just not auto-populating him any time for power forward. It's interesting when you get some guys, like I've had guys, like two really good five-star shooting guards, right? And you just don't have them listed at point guard, so when you go in and let the AI do all those suggestions, uh, it'll bench one of them. Just have him playing like eight minutes a game, if that. And uh, you go in and enable him at like point guard and small forward, and all of a sudden he's starting playing 34 minutes. So... If you're letting the AI suggest your starters or your playing time, uh, make sure you've enabled all the options for the different positions that you want the AI to consider the player at, or else you're not going to get a great recommendation. Ah, Farley Dickinson. Oh, that's night-on-night -night violence. I will not stand for it. You can't have knights fighting other knights. What is this? It's not medieval times. I'm the only one jousting around here. Farley Dickinson can get out. All right, we need to get back to the friendly confines of Bellarmine Hall over here uh, pretty quick and in a hurry. Start off the season with the school-best blazing hot two wins in a row. 
and then followed it up with uh, you know two tough losses in a row, which has much more been our experience so far with this university. But you know, uh, the two wins in a row is something that these Bellarmine alums are going to be telling their grandkids about seventy years from now. You know, cards came in and first two games of the season they went two and zero. Well, we were undefeated through two games so i mean that's a record that might stand for all time the only thing we can see we can we can let it play out i got high hopes here i got high high hopes sacred heart farley versus bellerman dinner <laughs> sacred heart and bellerman in in knights hall i'm hoping for the best oh what a crushing blow man i'm sure we we desperately missed our uh, broken arm shooting guard there. Could have been the difference in three points. Could have pulled out the big win against Sacred Heart and gotten to 30% of our season goal. Alas, it was not to be. Uh, our knights were defeated. Our horses collapsed. Our lances broke. Our veils were pierced. And uh, Sacred Heart. Broke our spirits, really. That's what happened. <laughs> We're going to get it up. We're going to pick it up, though. We're picking it up. We're brushing off the dust. We're headed out to UC Irvine. They haven't won a game all year. This is a pretty good opportunity for UC Irvine to get off the schneid. I can't lie. You know, We still don't really have it firing on all cylinders. We're moving in the right direction here. But the Anteaters have their best chance for a win so far this season against my Bellarmine Knights. Uh, we're going to try to prevent it from happening, but we're on the road. Oh, yes, there's Solomon Delayed. That's the man I know. And there was there was Preston Means showing up, and we demolished the Anteaters. Get out of here, Anteaters. You can't fight a knight. You're an Anteater. Oh, my word. Now, that's, uh, once again, second year in a row, we've got a better road record than a home record right now. So, your Bellarmine Knights are looking a little bit feisty this year, guys. A little bit feisty. We're, we're back to 500. You know, our, our three-game losing skid is a thing of the past. We're, ooh, Georgia State just beat Gonzaga at Gonzaga. Did y'all see that? Beat them by 10. Whoa. I wonder if Mark Few retired or if he's getting fired. <laughs> but, Yikes. I mean, that's one of those wins that's shocking even in a video game. All right. So now we're headed up to play Princeton. Wonder what kind of offense they'll be running. <laughs> All right. The Knights and the Tigers. Let's get it, boys. Ow, oh, they smoked us. And we got a team incident. Georgia State, yeah, that's right. Bellerman win should be a clip. Hey, when we get the right Bellerman win, I'm sure that it will be. Let's go see what this team incident was. Hassan McDice mouthing off about Delaya. Oh, you've made a mistake. Delaya is one of our best players. Hassan McDice, you are very much not one of our best players. You are doing absolutely nothing on the year. Uh, you made a bad decision, brother. Let's see. Players. Son McDice. Let's dial him up. Let's see if he's going to apologize or if he needs some time on the bench. Yep. Catch you later, McDice. See if we need to adjust our depth chart after that little tirade. Uh, we just need. Th here's another great improvement this year, guys. If you haven't noticed it yet, if you ever came in here and just went across and looked like, uh, yep, yeah, I got a small forward, everything, I'm good to go. Look down here. This tells you for each each segment whether or not you're good to go. 
And if I tried to progress right now, it would give me an error and tell me I don't, I've don't. i got an invalid roster because McDice was apparently set to be our small forward in garbage time. So now that is going to uh, one of these guys down here. And actually, uh, we do not want Lawson playing with his broken elbow. So we'll get him out of that role as well. So, yeah, Georgia State took down the Zags. Uh, Jedi, if you can pull that off in the CBGM, buddy, I'm sure that would make your day, right? Guys, I'm feeling pretty good. We're, uh, we're almost through December. It's about to get real crazy. I've been down here recording and, and streaming for a while tonight, but uh, I think I can power through... No promises. I don't, I don't want to promise on something that I can't deliver, but but I'm feeling good right now. If we keep if we keep competitive for the, Wolver, the Wolverines of Utah Valley versus the Bellarmine Knights, if we can stay competitive in some games like this, it'll power my adrenaline. We'll, we'll get right through this and see what's up. Let's see what's up, Jason Trelee. Baby. Yes, sir. I told you, these freshmen. Oh. If... If uh, Hall wasn't playing so well, I'd just straight up throw means into the starting lineup. Say, look, it's my team, my recruits, the guys I'm bringing in are better than y'all. Here we go. But Treely has really been uh, hes been a difference maker already in his freshman year. We've seen him in that top three over and over. Zags getting back on track there against Kennesaw State. I think Kennesaw State might be one of our conference opponents, actually. Oh, if Chris gets a shout out and I don't, that's lame. Four and four. We're five hundred. We are two and one at home. Oh my word. What's up, random task? Now well, actually you did miss much. Uh we went through the entire recruiting period and with the Bellarmine University Knights, we landed a top ten player from the Georgia Superstar Camp, who was also a top ten player at the Memphis Regional Camp. I think he's going to be uh, one of the he's going to be the best player in Bellarmine's early Division 1 history here in this save. Oh, the two-point win, Treely again, Charlie Hill and Keeley. So we got the two-point win at home and we're back above 500, folks, 5 and 4. 5 and 4. We're only supposed to uh our only goal is to win 10 and what was the other one? Something else we're not win the conference tournament. <laughs> so uh, our only reasonable goal is to win ten games, and we're halfway there. Five and four. We're not even into conference play yet. We're halfway there. You know, not only not only do the recruits make a difference, but especially at a school like this, when you've got decent coaching ability and you stick with the same system for a number of years it's such a huge improvement because usually these guys cycle through coaches none of the players can ever get over like 50 in any of the different uh, offense and defense like look at our strategy page like okay we got one player with dark green we got a handful with light green they're all seniors uh, so you know th these guys have trouble getting into these systems because nobody stays consistent they roll over coaches too often so that's another thing you can build on. You know, if you're, you, you can't get down in one of these journeyman saves because your coach is going to improve every year unless you set yourself a really low maximum on ability. Oh, 32 point win, baby. Treely again in the top three along with Delea. 60% of the way there. Man, if this was one of those like fundraising charity drives, like that little bar, we going, we'd be set, we'd be looking at crushing records now. It's only like 9 p.m. and this thing goes until like 4 a.m., right? So we don't know what it's going to end up looking like. But uh, last season we went 7-22. and 22. We're currently sitting at 6-4. and four. I'm excited. I feel justifiably so I'm excited. Yeah, absolutely random test. Number one tip, two years running from myself and GM Games 
pay attention to camps. It's one of the most important things to know about recruiting in this game. Uh, it, it really is a – I mean, there's just no better gauge. And there's no better gauge in real life than to go out and watch how they do on the floor against elite competition, right? I mean, I, I think that – who Georgia, my Bulldogs, up over the Zags again. So the Zags are having a rough year. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, I think in real life, you want to go out and watch players play against elite talent, and the ones that stand out are, are probably the better players. So uh, I think justifiably so. The camp results are wildly important. Oh, and after after the unbridled enthusiasm comes the crushing defeat, we eat a home loss against Albany. So that was, I don't want to call it devastating, but disheartening, you know. Knocked me off my high horse. I was trotting along trying to joust, and <laughs> Albany knocks us off of all teams. Uh, but we are cruising on through December, uh, and, I mean, I, I still feel good about how the season's going, 100%. How could you not feel good about this? And now we're going to play a bad Southern Miss team, uh, but we're at their place, so that's unfortunate. So we'll see how it goes down in Reed Green Coliseum as the Zags beat Ohio. 20 point win there to get them back on the winning track boom baby there was delay it now there was a red message was that an injury or a team incident we just took out southern miss that's a decent that's a decent little uh what are they conference usa yeah so i mean we're, we're reaching up a little bit the bad news is i'm almost certain that that red message was another injury and it's steve hess but that's just a sprained finger so that's not awful Lawson's still another 38 days with the elbow. So we're halfway through Lawson's injury, roughly. And we're sitting at 7-5. and five. So we've already matched last year's win total. And we got, what, 17 more games to try to improve? I think we should be able to pull that off, no promises. I think we can win one more game. If we can't, we got some bad, bad problems. Ooh, my card's pulling off a win over Providence. Love to see that. Doesn't matter in a, you know, real life, video game, baseball, soccer, water polo. I don't care what it is. I like to see Louisville win, baby. All right, now we're headed to Ole Miss. Ooh. It would be an interesting win, but somehow I think we're going to get smoked. And if we don't, Ole Miss might be looking for a new coach. The Pavilion at Ole Miss. All right, the Knights and the Rebs. Who you got? Ah, Ole Miss got us. Carlos Keeley playing well. Means playing well again. So definitely enjoy seeing the freshmen we've recruited already making a difference. I mean, here's the thing that you got to look at. The freshmen we recruited are already – stepping in and having an impact the same way that the seniors that were already here are having. So in a couple of years, those those guys we've recruited are really going to be carrying the team hard um, and, and going to be much more competitive. So I, I feel good that this team is on the right track. At this point, I've recruited three players I'm extremely happy with. Now, all three of those players are inside players, uh, so that's not ideal. But, you know, we got three quality players. The, the guy that's coming in next year, I mean, uh, he should have been a – I don't know that he should have been going to, like, a you know Louisville or Kentucky or a school like that. But, I mean, there's no reason for him not to be at uh, Arkansas or, you know, Iowa. There, there had to be some, some mid-tier power conference teams that could take a guy like that. Shoot. Eastern Kentucky, Western Kentucky, Murray State, Cincinnati, Ohio State, West Virginia, all of those teams, he could have played for any of them. But he's going to be a Bellarmine Knight. So here we go to play Liberty. And I think this is actually a conference game, right? I think I made the Liberty, Liberty, Liberty joke last time into Liberty Arena. I can go ahead and sim this one up. Ah, all right, we eat the loss. Delaya, Charlie Hill, and Bernard Dice. So Dice is playing well with his expanded role. Charlie Hill's still showing up pretty good for uh, for what it is. Let's 
seven and seven. All right, so uh, two games into my prediction of possibly winning one more game this year. So far, we have failed, but we have many more opportunities. Starting right here with Florida Gulf Coast coming into Knights Hall. We're going to get it. Before the end of January, we'll exceed last year's win record. How's that for a call of my shot? Can we do it right now? Oh, yes, we can. Dice, Delaya, and Hill send Florida Gulf Coast packing a 20 point victory, and we move on to eight wins. We stay above 500, and we are two wins away from the 10 win threshold that the board has asked us to meet. So very much well on our way. Let's take a quick look, make sure keeping up with um, email because we've still got a couple of outstanding offers. Uh, let's just look at available. Let's see, all right, so we're hot with Ben Jones. No interest out of Danny Williams. No interest out of Johnny Williams. So we're still nowhere on his list. Why are we not getting a top 10 out of him? I definitely bought the report for Louisville, Kentucky. Whatever. Uh, ben Jones, I mean, he's got a lot of schools he's big on. He's got a lot of interest in a lot of schools. So we'll see how that plays out. Uh, I, def I mean, I, I think we'll probably land him because a lot of his interest is in schools that are not going to offer him. So that won't be a big issue. So we'll at least get another guard. All right, I'm not stressing on the recruiting. We're going to keep, keep trying to build, bring in good players where we can, filling around the edges so we've got warm bodies. On the road at Ste... Oh, man. All right. <laughs> now, here's a dilemma. So, we're headed on the road, which is extremely a bad place for us to be playing. But we're playing at Stetson, who hasn't won a game all year. So, it would be very much embarrassing to lose to them right here. But, at the same time, it's entirely possible that we could be their first victory. So, let's see. Can we avoid shame, embarrassment, and letting down the Bellarmine faithful? Yes, four-point victory. We went on the road and we we kept those Stetson losers winless. Whoo, that's nine wins. Nine and seven, guys. What a turnaround in just one year. Uh, we're cruising right now. We're cruising with a major, major recruit waiting in the wings to come in here and really start Stetson's OP in your safes. You know, are, so Stetson's in this league. You're doing four to A&M though, right? Huh. I don't know. They were winless. It would have been terrible to, to lose that one. Um, but it's a pro do you play Stetson a lot in your saves? Play against Stetson a lot? Or are they just like popping up winning this conference, always being in the tournament kind of OP? The Lipscomb Bison, the Bisons and the Knights. Traditionally... Uh, physically, scientifically, like Knights should beat Bison. Uh, but we'll see how it works out on a basketball court. Lipscomb and Bellarmine. Oh, the Bison trampled the Knights, taking out years of aggression against the Knights, and they trampled us in Knights Hall. Oh, man, that was a tough one. I hate to lose by, like, 20 to a team like that. That I mean, first of all, we're at home. Second of all, we should be competitive with teams like that. So a 20-point loss is always really drives me nuts. Well, I had a little bit of a hiccup there, so I'm going to save real quick. Quick drink while we save.
What? Stetson beat Duke by 30 and the Zags by 22. That's crazy. Although in my save, the Zags just lost to Georgia State, so. Which is weird. Gonzaga's usually like awesome in all my saves. And for whatever reason in this one, they suck. It sounds like in years they suck, so. Uh, maybe it's like, I don't know. I guess that maybe Mark Few left or maybe he retired. I mean, no way to know. What I do know is we're one win away from double digits, baby. Caprice, did you just make that up? Or is that a story from some kind of save? I've got to know the answer to this. This is interesting. Chester the Cheetah. Bellerman headed down to Kennesaw State. Oh, we pull out the big win. Treely, Hill, and Delaya, but now we have to deal with another injury. Hopefully it's not a bad one. Uh, sore back. All good. Lawson is back in two weeks. So it's actually kind of interesting. Not only have we had an extremely uh, more successful year already, but we've done it minus one of our starters. Not that he was a particularly... He wasn't our best starter, right? But he was a starter, no less. 10 and 8, that's right. We're going, baby. We're going. 10 and 8. Last year was 7 and 22. Last year was a slog. I hated Simmon last year. I mean, and in, you know, in a lot of other situations, 10 and 8 would be a pain. But in this situation, right now, today with this team, 10 and 8 feels good, baby. 10 and 8 feels good. I think we can compete in the conference tournament. I don't know if we'll win it. But if we're if we finish tonight in the NCAA tournament, I'll lose my mind. I'll lose it. There will be so much jousting. I'll have to go find some more. Oh, oh look, we got another one right here. This is our NCAA tournament joust. I'm gonna put it over there. If we make the NCAA tournament, that bad boy's coming out. Maybe two or three times. I we'll see. Anything could happen. I'll knock the camera off the monitor. You know, uh, North Florida coming into Bellarmine. Winnable game. Winnable game, baby. That's right. Preston Means, Solomon Delea, Jay Ward doing his thing. Oh, my word. It's all coming together. 11 and 8. Your Bellarmine Knights. My goodness. My goodness. Turning scrubs into dubs. That's right. That is absolutely correct. Scrubs into dubs at Bellarmine. Although, I'll tell you, uh, I mean, we pulled two recruits that were decent, not spectacular, out of that Georgia camp. And look what's happening already. And I'm still not 100% convinced that Means shouldn't be playing over Hill or Hall or whatever. But, you know, in the, in the case of a close tie, I tend to slightly favor the AIs depth chart over mine over what i would personally do and i also tend to favor seniority so the senior over the freshman uh, so both of those factors went in hall's favor that's why he's continuing to start but that like i really like preston means ah couldn't pull it off there but there you see my freshman trillium means leading the way means doing it off the bench So, end of January, actually a decent time to pop over to the stats screen and see see what means versus uh, Hill, not Hall, I'm sorry. Uh, but how's the production look between these two? Uh, so, means is actually getting a decent chunk of time per game. The field goal percentage isn't significantly different. Free throws, neither of them can shoot at all. Hill, excuse me, Hill the much better rebounder. So yeah, I think Hill's, as a senior, Hill's earned the right to play out the season. Now I do need to check and see if Lawson's elbow has healed. Five days away, guys, five days away. When we get into February, Lawson will be ready to play. And the nice thing is they just come back 100%, right? So, you know, whatever recuperation, rehab, all that stuff is counted in at the front end of that injury when you get the number of days when those days run out the next day they're 100 percent and they're ready to go 
So, I mean, it might affect their scrubs into dubs. It subs if they had a chance. Man, we're taking this way too far. Um, but, yeah, I don't know if it affects their, their progression. They're learning the offenses and defenses and skill progression and whatnot. I would suspect that it probably does to some degree. But, you know, he'll be back and healthy, and that's what we really need is another shooting guard out there. So, Jacksonville coming into Knights Hall, and they're going to send the home fans out of the arena in a hissy they pulled the upset there <laughs> beach bear wants every team from north carolina to win except for duke uh that that sounds like about every fan in the nation yeah i want every school to do good except for duke and kentucky i mean who doesn't who likes duke or kentucky Steve Hess and Hassan McDice have been... Alright, so that's twice for McDice. Alright, so he's uh, he's looking at a two-week suspension here for sure. I don't even know if I'll... Let's see, can we just text him? Attitude. Alright, he's going to try harder. So Hess is not the problem, it's McDice. Where are you at? Uh, no, hold on. I'm not going to text him, I'm going to call him until he's... Even in a game, you gotta be a man, you gotta tell him to his face. But it's gonna feel good to hit this button. Two week suspension, get out of here. Jerk. Oh, you're a blue? No, you can't be a Duke fan. What are you doing? Are you cheer for the Yankees too? Come on, man. You can't do that. cheering for Dukins. Oh, man. I thought you guys were cool over there, CTG. Man, what is what is the Duke love? Yeah, I don't have to imagine not making the NCAA tournament there, Beach Bear. Louisville already didn't make the NCAA tournament. Rays fan. Alright. Alright. <laughs> you know... You gotta go and do something like that and totally redeem yourself. <laughs> I'll take I'll take a Rays fan. That's all cool. Everybody tends to hate the Duke fan. I, I've always had the one Duke fan in the office, and I, to be honest, they're usually pretty cool. But it's still just fun to not like them because they win so daggone much, you know. But I will say, like the last memorable game that Louisville played against Duke. The last important game was the conference tournament game that Duke won. But, like, the last like, memorable, like, I remember where I sat when I watched the game was the uh, Elite Eight game, and it was the Kevin Ware injury. But uh, I think you'll remember who won that game and eventually won the national championship, even if the NCAA wants to pretend that it didn't ever happen. Uh, and that was your Cardinals. All right, so Liberty coming into Bellarmine. Oh! We pulled out the win. That's all that matters. You don't have to look at the scoreboard. Don't pay attention to the scoreboard. Just walk out of the arena. You won. Go home happy. That's how we're going to handle that one. But Treeley's still playing very, very well. Treeley is probably making a run at this point at Conference Freshman of the Year. And I feel kind of bad because I actually thought Means was the better player. And to be fair... Means isn't getting as much playing time, so given the equal opportunity, Means could have been playing as well. Uh, but, you know, sometimes it's just about opportunity. Look at Treely. Uh, how's he doing rebounding-wise? Uh, his statistics are virtually identical to this senior that's keeping Means off the court. I, I think Treely's got a shot at conference player, uh, conference freshman of the year. But yeah, we're up to 12 and 10, guys. We're fighting. We're we're in February right now, and we are we have a very very legitimate shot to go 500 this year, which is truly incredible. Second year in Division One, rebuilding Bellarmine from nothing. Now we got to head down to Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, we've already played them at Knights Hall. I'm pretty sure we beat them at home, uh, but now they get their chance for a little bit of revenge in Alico Arena. Alico, Alico, not certain. 
Uh, the Knights head down to Florida. Oh, but Jason Treeley says, uh-uh, 12-point -uh. win. The Knights up to 13-10 and 10 with three games above 500. I'm about to be I'm about to bounce out of my chair. I'm so excited at this turnaround. It's been so quick. And I think it's being carried heavily by players that are going to be here next year. Oh, oh, I need to stop. Oh, stop, 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 stop. I gotta get Lawson back in the lineup. So how's, yeah, I, I'm not going to have any trouble setting Vice down. <clears throat> mm, I think that's right. All right, so we got our starter back. Bellerman, what what postseason did Bellerman make this year? I knew it was their first year. That's why you know it's a Louisville school and it's uh, their first year in Division One. So that's why I thought it would be a really cool place to start. Uh, you know, a little shout out to them. I talked a lot in the last stream about you know, personal connections and interactions. In and around Bellarmine University, been on their campus many times, uh, in one form or another. Oh, Stetson's actually won two games now, so good for them. But uh, you don't need any more. Look at Lawson in his first game back, dropping 15. That's how you come back from a broken elbow, baby. 15 points, sending Stetson out of here and picking up the 14th win of the year. Uh, Antonio Lawson making up for lost time there with a big 15-point outburst. So that's definitely good to see. Okay, so that third or fourth tournament, that's cool. That's good for Bellarmine, you know. That's good for them. Uh, you know, huge shout-out from me to Scotty Davenport, who was a long, long-time Denny Crum assistant uh, at Louisville. And he's been at Bellarmine uh, really ever since Denny left, I think, roughly. Uh, so Scotty's been at Bellarmine for quite a while, and and I know he had other offers. I know <clears throat> when Rick Pitino got removed, there were a lot of people that thought maybe Scotty Davenport would be a good interim coach at Louisville. So, uh, I mean, I know he had other opportunities, but Scotty's been at Bellarmine for quite a while now. So, uh, good for them making the postseason in their first D one D one season. That's cool. Headed down to Lipscomb, can we pull off a win? No, we can't. Delaya means tried. You know, Delaya really tried, but. Didn't get it done. It's cool. Y'all remember uh, when Northern Kentucky, their very first year in D1, won their conference tournament and made it into the NCAA tournament? And I, I think they played Kentucky in the first round. So it was their very first year in D1 and they made the NCAA tournament. It's really cool. Uh, and I don't think it was that long ago. Maybe three, four years, five. Uh, yeah, I'm getting older than the years starting to slide past. Uh, it doesn't seem like it was all that long ago, though. I think it might have been like 2016 or 2017. Yeah, the teams that moved... You know, it's hard to say. A lot of those teams are, are really close, so... I think also you probably um, you're probably more likely to remember <clears throat> the ones that move up and have the memorable story, right? Like if a team there's another win, Jason Treeley leads the way. Uh, but if a team moves up from Division Two and doesn't succeed, like you're not going to hear a news story about that, so you never hear about those. You're only hearing about it when it's like, oh, this school just you know their first year and they made a tournament. You always hear about those, so that might be a little bit of uh, I can't think of the phrase for it right now, but. Ooh, New Mexico State having a rough go. 9-18. Yikes. 
<clears throat> we are almost through February, folks. We are almost assuredly, almost all but guarantee, we are going to get through the end of this season and into uh, June 26th of 2022 before I cut the stream tonight. Can't promise it, but I can highly suggest it, right? So I think we're going to get there, uh, which should be good because we're going to get to see this conference tournament. We're going to get to see this team in the NCAA. I'm calling it. We're making it. We're winning this conference tournament. And then, oh, so close. That time it was the upperclassmen, Delea Hill and Keeley, and they just couldn't get it done. That's why you, you need those freshmen, man. You need Trillium Means. When Trillium Means show up and play and lead the team, good things happen. Yeah, New Mexico State is usually a pretty good team. I, New Mexico State was one of my first solo saves as a journeyman. I want to say that was like Draft Day Sports College of Basketball 2017, 2018, something like that, a long time ago. But, yeah, I was a, I was an Aggie a long, long time ago. Uh, that, wait, is it the Aggies or the New Mexico State? New, Mex, New Mexico is the Lobos. New Mexico State's the, right? I don't know. I'll get them mixed up. Anyway, I was at New Mexico State, for sure. And actually had them decent. You know, they could pull a lot of players out of New Mexico, which uh, back in the day was halfway decent. Now, over the years, uh, the team there at Wolverine Studios has really uh, refined their recruiting. And, uh, oh, there's another win. Hill, DeLay, and Keeley, and McDye suffered an injury. Actually, he might not have. That might have been the suspension kicking in. Uh sometimes it'll register as an injury so yeah they're the aggies uh you know back in the day the recruits were just sort of randomly assigned states or something i guess here recently they've really honed in on like these are talent rich states they need to have more talented players that sort of thing so i don't know that they'd be as good in a save now but oh ben jones decision coming to bellarmine so we've got ourselves a, a future guard uh we weren't on any really interesting uh, highly touted players, but we need bodies, and that's a body. God, we won 16 games. Last year, we went 7 and 22. We were awful. Right now, we're 16 and 12. 20 wins is in sight. Our goal was 10. We're looking at doubling it. This is an outstanding second year. Outstanding second year. Does that win mean you finish above 500 this year no matter what? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm going to simulate this game first. Then we're going to go do the... Oh, wait. We only got one game left because this shows all the upcoming games. So if you, if you just count two tournament losses, lose this game and next, yes, we cannot finish worse than 500. Any win, we finish above 500. Let's go ahead and get the win right now against Jacksonville. Let's do it. Let's do it. Knights. Let's go. No, that was our worst game of the year. Probably because of my pathetic little joust right there. I should have done a real one. But they saw the fake one coming, and they're like, we're out of here. Not playing for that crap. Playing at Denver and trying to go with only Colorado players. Uh, Yeah, you, you know, you're just not going to have as many, like, Colorado is not a traditional state for uh, for basketball talent. You know, you're, you're really looking. I mean, you're you're definitely not looking at the mountains. That's for sure. Uh, the population outside of Denver, I don't know how dense the population is, but I don't think that the weather's all that ideal for basketball, right? Wait, was that our last regular season game? I thought we would have had. Where was was the one up here? The one that we just lost. Let's take a look at the schedule. Yeah, that was the last regular season game. So actually at this point, we're ab above 500. Yeah, you were right. I don't know. You were, uh, I misread the schedule versus who we were actually playing, but you had it nailed. Uh, we're above 500. No way around it. We can only lose two more games, period. We still got plenty of opportunities to win games, but we can only lose two more. So no matter what, 
We turned it around. We're going to finish above 500. We were above 500 in conference. We went 9-7. and seven. And with the right... Uh, with the right streak here, man, we, we could win 20. I'm still, I'm still calling it NCAA, baby. Let's win this conference tournament. Let's do it. Yes, there are pipelines in the game when you get 10 recruits from a given state. That's absolutely correct. All right, so we got Kennesaw State. Let's check out these emails. So I feel like, do we get another players declaring for draft? Shockingly, none of our players uh, declared early. So there are your Norton finalists. Yeah, this is it. This is fire. This is it. Kennesaw State, Bellarmine. I don't see. Okay, look through here. Tell me uh, who's the favorite. Who's going to beat us out? Who who can we not beat? And we can certainly lose to Kennesaw State straight out of the gate. But there's nobody in this tournament that we cannot beat. Let's check the standings just real quick. All right, so look at that. North Alabama Lions actually finished first. Does pipeline count for international? No, I don't think that's a thing. Once you get 10, what happens? It is easier to recruit in said state. Yeah, I, I don't know exactly how they do it behind the scenes, but you're more likely, and whether it's more likely to have initial interest or more likely to get interest from, like, location, um, my, my gut tells me that it, it's going to give you a slight advantage on recruits that prefer location but at the same time it could just be a, a general overall buff you know i don't like to get behind the scenes and, and try to uh, reverse engineer games and, and see how the sausage is made i really don't care all i know is it's better to recruit guys that are in a pipeline state than not so if i can get a pipeline established that's good uh, if you need more than that i'm not your guy because i don't I don't go that uh, I, I don't know I, I don't have any more information for that ah uh, we got bounced in the first round by Kennesaw State truly tried couldn't get it done though uh, pipelines not going to count for international because uh, it, it's not an option if you go into your coach's profile and then go over to uh, there's actually a, an option for pipeline in there uh, so so you can see Oh, man, I just got disappointed because I realized we got knocked out of that. And, you know, a lot of times you lose in the conference tournament and it's no big deal. But I don't know if we'll make a postseason tournament now. So, I mean, I'm holding out hope for like a CBI or a CIT or something. What am I doing? Device is trying to give me more trouble than it's worth. Yeah, that loss sucked. It really did. But, I mean, the good news is oh, Gonzaga lost to Portland. Nothing nothing sucks as bad as that. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, the good news is if we're, if we're at Bellarmine next year, help is on the way. Our freshmen will be a year older and a year wiser. Our guards are going to look a little bit weak. But, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I think that this year will increase prestige. I'm not certain. I mean, we're not going to make a postseason tournament, so it's going to be pretty difficult. Yeah, it's the same list and same order. Uh, I briefly uh, made some slight amendments to the what I actually stated for each number, but I don't think it's going to be. Um, I don't think it's going to be significant. Uh, I'll Discord you as soon as the stream's over with, with just the note that I made. No, I was reading off my notes. We're at the selection show. So let's check it out. Sorry about that. My After the OBS reset, I guarantee my audio level jacked that way up. I need to turn it down after this for you guys. So probably just blew out some eardrums. And I'm very, very sorry for that. Xavier and UConn in a play-in game. UC in a play-in game. All right, the Villanova Wildcats. Texas, West Virginia, Kansas State. 
It was Farley Dickinson, so they actually got a nine seed. Iowa with a one seed. All right, all right, all right. Alabama with a three. Oh, the Ville with an 11. Oof. Maybe they need to hire me. No, I'm just kidding. Louisville is actually off limits in this save. I uh, do not want more than one Louisville save this year. I got very, very confused last year. Florida, San Diego State, Arkansas, Michigan, UCLA, Michigan State. All right. And then we've got the Arizona Wildcats. The Indiana Hoosiers with a two. Bring them back the Hoosiers. NC State, North Carolina versus UAB. There's your Rattlers. Rakasmas D. You'll have to tell me how to pronounce that later, boy. But, uh, yeah, your Rattlers got a 12. A 12 seed for the Florida A&M Rattlers. 24 and 8 on the season. All right. There you have it. So, let's see. Oh, my God. McDice is pissing me off. What year is he? He's a junior. He's gone. You're gone. Don't care about the prestige shit. Get out. She pisses me off. All right, so we did not make any kind of postseason tournament. So we're going to blow through the NCAAs till we get to the Final Four. Give a quick recap, and then we'll hit the offseason. Hey, I tried to fix that audio output random task. It's not my fault that OBS likes to update, and then I like to forget to do things. But, yeah, if you turn the sound down when I get to Selection Show Sunday, you're a true fan. <laughs> Got to send a shout-out, man. <laughs> you know what's up. You've been around the block. All right, let's blaze through this. Was that, that was the first weekend. Ooh, Xavier got whooped up on by BYU. Oh, Dusty Davis. Look at Dusty Davis with 13 and 16. My word. The double-double machine. That's why they call him Double D Dusty Davis. Oh, Georgia just whooped up on Gonzaga on a Tuesday. That's a nonsense tournament. Did Holy Cross... Wait... Did Holy Cross just beat Indiana? We're going to have to see that again here in about two seconds. Once we get past this Sunday, the Final Four is set, and we'll see what, what happened right there. All right, so what do we got here? Villanova, Kansas State. Texas, LSU over West Virginia. So that's a pretty nice little upset there. LSU had them had themselves a nice run. In Cleveland, it's Iowa, Brigham Young. I mean, so that's all chalk. Kentucky upsets Iowa. In Dallas, Florida, Michigan, San Diego State, Michigan State. In Phoenix, the six-seed Holy Cross Crusaders upset the number two-seeded Indiana Hoosiers 78-69, go on to face the one-seeded Arizona Wildcats and win the game. Guys, I mean, look at this Final Four. you got Wildcats on Wildcats, all kinds of tradition. Villanova and Kentucky. On the other side of the Final Four, you got the San Diego State Aztecs and the Holy Cross Crusaders. Holy Cross, <laughs> what is going on on that side of the bracket? The Aztecs and the, oh my word, there's like, there's at this point I understand San Diego, San Diego State's a two. Okay. Aside from that, one of these two teams is going to be in the final game. Like Cinderella's not turned into a pumpkin until at least Monday next Monday. Like somebody, one of them's getting to the final. Period. Wow. 
if I hadn't been streaming and recording so long, I might have played that game out. <laughs> Just because that's so interesting to me. Oh, my former my former SEC schools. Uh, getting some cards on cards violence there. And then Georgia falls to Furman after doing the deed to Auburn. There was obviously no, uh, what was, Corey Gray. Corey Gray was my Auburn fella. I do not know if Holy Cross has ever actually made the tournament. I will guarantee you Holy Cross has never actually made the Final Four. Right as Beach Bear says they were good in the 30s or 40s. I will guarantee you Holy Cross has never made the Final Four in the modern era. How about that? San Diego State knocks out Holy Cross. The San Diego State Aztecs are advancing on to the national championship game. And they take on the Villanova Wildcats and lose. Your Villanova Wildcats win the national championship in 2022. Award show. Turn down your speakers. I'm going to be quick up with the escape, but watch out. Okay. That was pretty good there. All right, so there's your individual awards. Ooh, Mark Thompson and Villanova. <laughs> That's it. There's your first team All-Americans, your second team All-Americans. And then... Jesus, does anybody even know what conference I'm in? Somebody know what conference I'm in? Atlantic Sun, we think. Yep. All right, so there's your second teamers. We are shut out there. First teamers. Shut out there. But Jason Treely, freshman of the year, called that one a while ago. Jason Treely was the man. 11 points a game, almost five rebounds. So he's only going to get better. That's really exciting to see. We're moving on to the offseason. Thank goodness for random task. Because <laughs> I think I was at the bottom. I was going to start from like the bottom of the alphabet and go up. It would have been a while before we got to Atlantic Sun. All right, here we come. Let's first of all season review. Didn't get to the didn't get to win it. Won ten games. How's that mesh with our job security? Doesn't change it whatsoever. All right, so they didn't find that to be significantly different from the last season, which sucks. So now we've got the part of the stream where Chris starts to get a little nervous. Oh man, we're gonna have. We're going to have good offers this year. I can already see a good one. Oh, we got some good offers this year. Florida A&M being top of the list there, right? Am I right? Florida A&M is the best, best offer. Mmm. How Northwestern gonna go on probation in basketball? Are you for real? <laughs> Chris is saying screw himself. <laughs> That's funny. Uh yeah, so I mean, there are 
It's not betraying the Knights. They always knew what was going to happen. I've already brought them in their best player they're ever going to have. I mean, that center is going to be sick for Bellerman. But I mean, we've got some real, some real, real offers to think about here. Uh, Miami and Missouri are both really interesting to me. Boston College is kind of interesting. Um, Seton Hall would be interesting if they weren't like a decent team in a ridiculously good conference. Like so many, so many of those teams in the Big East are tough. I think that, like all of these teams are a huge step up. Look at the prestige. We're at 14 prestige right now. I'm sorry. Let's let's actually check because it may have changed. No, still at 14. Conference prestige went up, but we're still at 14. Uh, so no postseason, no improvement in prestige. That's how that works. All right. Oh, man. That's a tough call. All right. So... I'm going to give... Personally, I do to Paul or Seton Hall. I actually disagree, Random Task. I think you're going to have a tougher time competing in the Big East Conference than you're going to have in the ACC or especially the SEC. I'd much rather compete in the SEC. Think about the Big East and what you've got. I mean, you're going out there and playing Villanova and you're playing Xavier and you're playing UConn. Is UConn in that conference? Or uh, Creighton? There's a bunch of good teams in that conference. It's much more difficult than you think it is. Now, I'm not staying at Bellman for four years, I can tell you that. If I don't go this year, I'll go next year. ACC at a weak school, I get slaughtered. You're right, but I don't think... I mean, which of these are weak schools? Miami? Miami's 54 prestige. Boston College is 41. That's on the low side. But I'm not really interested in Boston College. I'm interested in Miami and Missouri. Those are, to me, the most two, the two most intriguing offers. Honestly, if I had to pick a third offer that I'm actually interested in, it'd be Western. Um, but Miami or Missouri, one of those two. Or Miami, Missouri, or stay at Bellarmine. I'm going to take a quick refreshment break. Let the chat, if you guys can come to some consensus, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'll make the executive call when I get back. Facilities are worse, the academics.
thought about this the entire time I was upstairs. And for the record, I've come to no decision. So let me get the streamer beverage going. Streamer fuel, whatever we want to call it. Alcohol. All right, let's see what chat's got to say. Providence isn't an option. What are you talking about, Providence? Jetta says Miami. Beach Bear says Mizzo. Uh, hold on. Jet out of Miami. Beach Bear, random task, Mizzo. Well, we got three votes. We got three votes. Y'all gonna make me figure this out on my own, right? All right. So, first thoughts: uh, advantages, disadvantages. Miami. I would have to play Louisville. That would be that would hurt my my soul. Twice a year, maybe a third time in the conference tournament. So that's a notch against them. Uh, their facilities are worse than Missouri's. Their academics are better. So that means they get a disadvantage here for no no particular reason. They do get a slight advantage over here, but then that's going to come with the SAT minimum score increase, which is, so I don't know if that's a bonus or not. So what we're going to do is check out Miami and Missouri real quick. <laughs> Chris is going for the Rattlers. Okay. Ross going for the Knights. Missouri? You don't say Missouri? <laughs> He's going... CTG guy's going hard for one more year at Bellarmine. Uh, Alright, hold on. Real quickly... We are going to check out Missouri and Miami. Missouri, maybe? The Tigers? You tell me how to say it. I'll check it out. Miami, 243000 dollars scouting budget. Non-60 SAT. Only one conference championship in school history. Only three Sweet 16s. It's only 228, 920 SAT minimum. Hmm. Mizzou. So they, the Tigers have eight conference championships, 27 appearances. They got a lot better history than Miami did. I did not realize that. Their starting budget, Missouri, yeah. Starting budget's roughly the same. Team prestige in the same ballpark. But their advantage is lower SAT, better facilities, and I get to beat on Kentucky. All right, so Random Task says it's Mizzou. It's probably why they call it the zoo or whatever. Mm. 
it's a difficult call, man. It, I, I feel like this is so interesting. Either one of these teams could be turned into a powerhouse. Either one of these teams could be turned into a powerhouse. Where do we want to do it? Where do we want to do it, Chris? It, it, all right, so, Chris, your first vote was the Rattlers. Who Who's your second place team? I want to beat on Kentucky. I really do. Missouri could be good. Really don't want to stay. I really don't want to stay. I want to I want to get this thing going. Like the the problem was in the last one. Like we bounced around. We had like six seasons at every school. We didn't have anything long and consistent. Uh, it, was, it was cool to do a little homage for Bellerman. Oh, defer to the fans who can't make a decision either. so frustrating you guys the fans all tie Chris defers to the fans I don't know what to do 228 what do we uh hold on <laughs> Such a decision. So much fun. 23. Oh, man. 23 and 36. We'd be setting ourselves up. Maybe the loot. I don't know. That's, that's a decent winning percentage for this school, I think. All right. Let's do this. Let's check our coach's reputation. Real quick. 42, very much below average. Just trying to figure out like if we've got any kind of big name schools coming for us anytime soon. My gut says no. So my gut says this was our entrance job. Now we go to our intermediate job. And if we turn that into a dynasty, that's great. Or if we end up wanting to jump somewhere else, that's cool too. So... Penn State's interesting, too. I've always thought about Penn State, but... It's a, now this is more like when you try to jump into the Big Ten with Rutgers or Penn State, that's a tough hill to climb. Vandy's not easy either with the academic requirements in the SEC. Although, let's check them out now. I'm starting to... Vandy's starting to be my third school my third favorite over Western a little bit. Let's see what kind of investment they've made in their basketball program. I always really like to know what kind of budget I would be walking into. Leave Stackhouse alone. <laughs> All right, so Vandy's about the same. Much better academics, but look at that, that SAT minimum is 1100. That's a killer. Yeah, the the Big Ten, like Penn State or Rutgers, you just get demolished. You can't compete with that. It's ridiculous. Oh, 
All right, folks. Well, Rhode Island. <laughs> uh, guys, Chris, get the logos ready, baby. Is that what? I don't think the growl's right, but I think a. Oh, maybe that a. We're gonna be Tigers, baby. Columbia, Missouri. SEC, here we come. New Kings of the SEC. Before this saves over, I want to take out Kentucky's 38 conference championships, whatever that nonsense is. The Missouri Tigers came over from the Big 12 to the SEC to dominate. They haven't been able to do it for reasons of bad coaching. So cards is here. Yes. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. That's right. Missouri Tigers, we're going to apply... We're very happy to welcome me as the next basketball coach. That's right. Beat out a number of other candidates. And here we go. Mizzou. Yeah, Mizzou. 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 I don't know what the hell it is. Mizzou. It's like the zoo, right? Mizzou. That's my Bengal Tiger. Gerald Floyd looks like he's a player. How are they losing games with him and Matthews? And King, oh man, this, this team is stacked. What's Quanzo Martin doing? Dude, you can't be sucking like that. Come on, Quanzo. Mm. Look at our recruiting assistant. We don't have to hire him, he's already here. Oh my word. That's 90,000 out of our. 240, give or take. So we got like 150 left. All I need. Oh, shh. Let's call it 30. I need 40. So I can probably only spend about 60 or 70,000 on these other two coaches. But Cornell Mann is a heck of a recruiter right out of the gate, baby. Yeah, it's a good team. Let's go get these coaches hired up. Man, I'm excited. Very excited. A little bit sleepy, but also very excited. All right, so his range is 26 to 86. But we're offering him a second assistant. What I say, we got about seventy-ish to spend, give or take. Let's offer him fifty thousand for three years. And we'll offer you the third assistant at twenty-five. Yeah, the recruiter I just got gifted is amazing. I don't like switching the coaches from one thing to another. Um, uh, to me, it kind of feels like abusing the game mechanic. Uh, not that it is. Just to me, it feels that way. So, I don't ever do that. I can't see if we landed our second assistant. I saw we got the th third assistant. Sadie Washington. Is he in here somewhere? All right, I still have a uh, vacancy, so he must have gone elsewhere. Armand Gates could be a good second assistant. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. This is one of these teams that, and actually Miami and Missouri are both teams that uh, for a long time I thought could be potential uh, destinations, like places I'd like to play as. And I played a little bit with Missouri in the um, first access. 
I think it was the first access for this year's game. And I don't remember exactly why I moved on from that, but so I played around with it a little bit. Otherwise, it would have been an immediate jump. But like I had a great experience with it. Uh, it's definitely a team that you can turn into a ridiculous powerhouse. And so, yeah, I think that five hours of Bellarmine was enough for anyone. Like, look, we gave them their shot. We set them up with a handful of players that should give them a, a, a jumping off point. Uh, but we want to get somewhere where we can have some some real content, some real battles for these big time players, uh, and we're going to be able to do that in short order here at Missouri. Uh, the first couple of years, we're we're definitely going to be building and and pulling you know top twenty fives out of different camps and that sort of thing. But by like year four, we're going to be competing for final fours. So I don't need more time. Budget is interesting. But for now, I think we go with facilities. They'll probably tell me no anyway. So. All right, request denied. No surprise there. Let's move on. Now I wonder what the recruiting class looks like. I wish I, wish I could get, like, the center that we recruited to Bellarmine. I wish he could decommit and follow me to, to Missouri. I mean, he'd be a perfect starter here. He's going to be ridiculous. I guarantee you, I personally guarantee you, he's freshman of the year in that conference next year. Unless, like, he, he has an injury or he just flat out doesn't get minutes. There's no other way around it. All right, so we've got three scholarships and seventy thousand dollars, which will probably turn out to be about thirty thousand dollars by the time we get through uh, what I'll most decidedly do. But let's see what our Missouri recruiting class, as well as that uh, Bellarmine recruiting class, see where they come in. Indiana had a good class. Louisville with a top 25 class. Not great. Look at that Bellarmine in the top 100. That's right. You watch what that class does. Yeah, that would be cool. I mean, if that dude ever transfers, I guarantee I'm going after him because I guarantee you he's the one that made that a top 100 class. I mean, Bellarmine, they're in their, that was their second recruiting class of all time, and it was a top 100 class. And I guarantee that's toward the top of their conference. So we can just scroll through now and see Missouri here at 171. So my Bellarmine class was way, way better than the Missouri class. Not a shock. All right, so here, uh, if you guys are paying any attention, Chris is posting right now our top 10 tips videos. And if you learn anything from that, one of the most important things is this year, the gold uh, premium reports are so much more important. So we're going to grab the Great Plains premium report. That is actually the main thing Miami had in their favor. If Missouri was in the southeast region, it would have been a no-brainer. The fact that they're in the Great Plains held me back a little bit. The only thing I can say for the Great Plains is I could look at establishing a pipeline to Texas. Because Texas does get a lot of good talent. Not that there's not talent in other areas. But, I mean, geez, we don't even get Chicago. Like, we get Texas, and that's it. We get the Dakotas, Nebraska, and Texas. I mean, but you got to get the premium report. You just have to. Let's 
Look at Gerald Floyd, my word. An eight in scoring, an eight. How did they lose games with this guy? What did he do last year? 15 points a game, that's not bad. He just must not have had any help. Mm, yeah, Aaron Smith looks like the only real help here. Okay. Nobody transferred out. Not interested in picking up transfers. That is not my thing. Very much not my thing. Yeah, I mean, we, we could recruit St. Louis, Kansas City. I mean, there's places to recruit. But, I mean, it's nothing like Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Louisiana. I mean, those states produce some serious talent. Kentucky can chip in. Tennessee can chip in. The Dakotas aren't producing talent, period. Nebraska really doesn't produce talent. Colorado, I'm not sure. I think Colorado was in the Great Plains, but I don't know if they're producing talent. Uh, let's see what the AI tells us to do. They're thinking East Coast Jam with Houston, and I kind of tend to agree with that. East Coast Jam's a weird camp. Um, because you know Georgia superstars, the lower tier, elite, Indy Elite are the top guys. Like, a guy that's top 25 at East Coast Jam, how do you compare that against a guy that was decent at Indy Elite? I don't know how to answer that. I don't know how to answer that. What I'm going to actually do is go to Georgia. And here's my theory on this is you're going to get a, a wider pool of players that you're – so I put more emphasis on camp results, right? If I go to Georgia, I'm going to get a wider pool of players that I can get some kind of hit on. Like a hit is just like an indicator of ability, like current ability. Like guys in my region, I'm pretty much only going to be recruiting the Great Plains right now. Guys in my region, if they're top 25, like they're automatically going to probably do well at these other camps, right? But there could be guys – that are that are decent at Georgia that don't chart on any of these other camps. So like any of the top like top level talent, you can't get around it. They're top level talent. So Indy Elite, I don't need to know that at all. I can just go pull them if they're interested. Houston Classic's gonna identify the top fifty in the region. So I'm trying to figure out like how do you identify the fifty through one hundredth in the re in the region? And I think maybe that's through Georgia. Yeah, yeah, Beach Bear's right. Anything I say immediately will be disproven by the laws of physics. That's how uh, life works. Like, right as soon as I said Oregon State sucked, Oregon State won a tournament and knocked Louisville out of the NCAAs. So, I mean. All right, folks. We are on to June 26th of 2022. We had our glorious, glorious two-year run at Bellarmine. We we're almost 500 overall. We made a really quick turnaround, in my opinion. Let's see. I really don't think we're going to recognize any names over here yet. Oh, there's Louisville. All right, so delete all that. Now, let's get a sneak peek. Last time... As you recall, uh, Chris pointed out that our interested recruits started out post-500. So the top 500 ranked players had no interest. So let's get a sneak peek. We want to be looking at the Great Plains... And guys, keep in mind when you're looking in here, if you want to know true star rankings, look at the top view by region. Don't look at by gold star report because that's it, it narrows it down too much and changes some of the ratings. It's like a lot of people will be like, oh, well, you, I recruited a four-star guy. Well, maybe the regional report said it was a four-star guy, but overall it was not. So go up here if you want to see those true ratings. So Great Plains region, full recruit list. 
we've got top 50 guys interested straight out of the gate. Straight out of the gate, baby. Look at how many four-star players are interested. Guys, it is two. You're going to get about two more streams where we're building and struggling. You know, like the rest of the next stream is going to be this recruiting class and whatever games we play this year with this roster. You know, maybe that point guard does some things, but two more streams where it's up in the air. By the third stream, we're second round to sweet 16 and then it's just on like then it's on and it's just a matter of like do we stay at missouri long term or eventually does the right program come along that that we all agree that we want to jump to and that's the only thing to discuss that's the only thing to watch so man recruiting this is going to be so much more interesting because we're not just digging up one and two star bodies that want to come like these are legit players. All right, guys. That's the stream. I hope y'all had half as much fun with it as I did. I had an absolute blast. We got it one last time for the record. Like, just because we brought in a top 10 prospect, those Bellarmine Knights may be without us. Coming for you. Look out, Ace. Atlantic Sun, Atlantic 10, whatever I was in. You're going to get whooped up on by Tully, I think it was Tully, Tully, whatever it was. But uh, now the SEC's got a new problem, and it's called the Missouri Tigers, and uh, they're going to get whooped up on cards. See how many four stars are from North Dakota. One, two. I see two. I see two. Uh, but anyway, we're going to call it a day. I had an absolute blast as usual. And when we get back, man, it's time to get serious because we're going to start making runs into the NCAA tournament. We're going to start making runs at conference championships. And we're going to start putting together a history for this stream because, as I've said several times, my favorite stream from the 2020 edition of this game was our wrap up stream. And we only had 28 seasons to review. And this time. If I can possibly double it, I'd love to do that. So uh, I want to get deep into this. It's 2022. I'd love to get into like the 2050s, 2060s before we're done here. And I would prefer, if Missouri is not our last school, I would like it to be our second to last school. But uh, regardless, that's my plans. That's where we're at tonight. But who knows what can change. They might fire me. <laughs> you know, They might not have any fun with cards being their coach. So uh, guys, I'm out of here. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you guys stop by again next time. Uh, and, you know, jump in if you got thoughts, suggestions, uh, places you want to see us land, you want to see us stay at Missouri for the rest of the career, whatever it is, uh, reach out on the Discord, uh, in the YouTube comments, wherever. Like us, follow us, do all that good stuff, but don't miss the next stream because it's about to get serious. Man, that was fun. I'm out. I'll catch you all next time.